Hi, I'm Jake from the Fuel Power YouTube channel and this is my 1991 Rover Mini City. Now, I've always loved the design of the Mini, not just the actual styling of it, although you've got to admit it is pretty cute, but also the engineering side of things. Now, I love engineering solutions to problems. So, of course, one of the characteristics, I guess, or aspects of the Mini that made it so well known, the fact that the engine was turned around, so you got more space on the interior for passengers and luggage, which also meant that you could have... A fairly sizable boot on it. Okay, it's not the last word in practicality on the boot size, but for the size of the car, it's still a magnificent piece of work, this. A really inspired piece of design. But I've always loved the Mini. Every time I went to a museum as a child, I'd have to go and try and find the Mini in there because it was just cute. Something about it attracted me to it. I can't exactly put into words what it was that attracted me to it, and to be perfectly honest. I think it was just the styling, the way that it all been crafted. It was really quite simple and straightforward, and yet something about it appealed. But it wasn't just that. As a child, I was a really big fan of model cars. Now, there was one particular car that I liked playing with quite a lot as a child, which I think I actually got as a gift from my nan. And it was this particular model, which was just flashed on screen. Yes, this little one, 132 inch scale, Mark 1 Mini Cooper. I believe the colour of this one is actually surf blue. Playing with this as a child, I think even quite early on, I knew that a Mini was going to be the car for me at some point in my life. I was going to have one. And I think this really started it all off. So, as it happened, one day whilst just searching the internet, about three years ago now, in 2019, or even nearly four years ago, I mean, that's scary to think from my uh, perspective. But about that sort of amount of time ago, I happened to come across this one, which really wasn't too far away from me. And the bodywork from the pictures that I saw online actually didn't look too bad. So I got my dad to come with me. We went to have a look at it, did a test drive, and we decided, yes, this is a great car. And it, it was a good price as well. So we made an arrangement and an agreement with the seller, get it through the MOT. And we'll pay your uh, your asking price for it. He got it through the MOT. It passed. The only adv uh, advisory was to change the tyres. I was happy with that. I was planning to change the wheels anyway. So I ended up coming away the next weekend after all the insurance and everything had checked out and that was all good. And I came away with the Mini. I was a happy boy. When I bought the car, it was pretty well stock, apart from a couple of very small details. One of them was the bumpers, but the other one that was on the car when I bought it was an uh, electronic ignition system, which supposedly helped with actually making the car a little bit more reliable upon starting in the mornings. Although, as it turned out recently, that actual unit that was in the car did fail me, so that has now been replaced with another one, which we'll get onto in a little bit. But other than that, the car was completely and utterly stock. I am the third owner of the car. The first owner was a elderly gentleman that used it to go to and from work every day and the second owner um, was a lady that used it again to go back and forth to work she didn't really drive it too far it was only a couple of miles from uh, home to work and it was actually her husband who was selling it to me on behalf of her so that's how uh, 
the ownership of the car went. So the previous owner, owners of the car basically didn't really do a huge amount to it, apart from maybe a couple of reliability and very slight style upgrades, shall we say. But under my ownership, it has changed a little bit to sort of make it my own. So as I've already mentioned, the tyres, I'd always intended on changing them or the wheels to something else and so I decided to go with mini lights or in this case super lights. The grey I thought worked quite nicely with the black arches as well. It's anthracite grey on this and also I wanted the wheels to actually be a little bit wider and fill the arches out a little bit more. The original wheels that were on here when I got the car they were past their best say so at least both the wheels and their tyres and they also didn't really fill out the arches enough it was kind of a bit too narrow, so I got these ones because they filled out the arches a bit more. Also, I got the Yokohama A359 tyre because I thought um, it was a good tyre. I've had very good recommendations of it from uh, other people in the mini scene. So when I got the tyres for this car, those are the ones that I went for, for that very reason. But if we start here at the front, you can see a bit of a theme going on with it. I wanted to make it look a bit like a 60s cafe racer style with also uh, keeping the 90s look of it and I think I've achieved that so things I've changed to make it look a bit more 60s were the lights I've gone for this sort of P700 Lucas style one these are aftermarket of course these aren't originals with the sort of little triangle star thing in the middle which allows you to actually put a bulb into it so a practical upgrade because it means I can put brighter bulbs in it as well as just change the bulb when they go instead of the whole light unit. An Austin style wavy grill. The mirrors on the side. I've gone for a bit more of a bullet style with these just because I like it. It's as simple as that really. The original mirrors were on this. Not only that, but I've also added this tiny little overtaking round style mirror. Again, just another little detail that uh, adds to that that aspect of it basically a bit more of a cafe race look but also the graphics that are here on the doors and actually on the bonnet as well that was put on to celebrate the 30th year of the car the 30th birthday in fact we put a little balloon at the back of this car because it fell on the weekend of the bmc and leyland show in 2021 so we put a balloon on the back and the stickers to mark 30 years of this particular mini happy birthday the perfect time to have that on but yes graphic to celebrate the city graphics the originals on here were a turquoisey color uh, apparently they had been changed previously but uh, the ones that were on the car when i got it were fading and in fact one of them had faded so badly it was actually white i'm guessing it was like a print type vinyl so actually seeing the white on the blue i thought it looked a lot better than the turquoise color to be perfectly honest so i just had some made up by a friend who works at a vinyl company or worked at a vinyl company at the time and so he made these up for me in the original style but we also added 1000 on here just to mark the fact that it's a 1000 cc mini also a bit of a nod back to older mini models which had the 1000 on them we've also got sticker showcase on here so you can see possibly a few channels you might recognize these are people and places i support that doesn't necessarily mean to say that i haven't got everyone on here because i haven't but that's just the start of it essentially little union jack here on the rear quarter of the car i thought that's just a nice little detail it's something that just adds to it really around the back we've got tow bar manaflow exhaust needs a bit of a clean i'll admit this car's been on plenty of adventures this year and I haven't gotten around to cleaning it in time for this video if I'm perfectly honest, but uh, it doesn't look too bad. But if we look here, we've also got stickers on the back. Speakers, we'll get onto those in a little moment. There we go. Fuel power and walls wheel stickers. But here in the boot, probably my personal masterpiece of this because I actually made this boot board kit up from scratch. I used designs from the internet to actually make this. But most of them have a little board up here that stops you from putting anything in this area here. Which, in my opinion, is a huge waste of space. You actually get quite a lot of stuff in there if you really wanted to. So I made my own little arch covering for it. And put some carpet on, which I bought quite cheaply on eBay, I'll fully admit. But I think it looks nice. It just cleans it up a little bit and makes it look a little less basic. Rover badge on here. I got that from a show. Just stick on there. Just for a bit of fun. 
amplifier for the speakers because I'm a big fan of my music. I know Alec Isagonis wasn't, but I very much am. But also something which I know Ian has featured on Team Ballylock Classics. He's got a boot light which is, I think, made in actually the same way as this one. So I've installed one as well. We speak quite a lot on uh, various social media sites so we sort of bounce ideas off each other so he's done one for the traveler i've done this for my mini i've also got a video of this coming up on my own channel very very soon but that's the boots there's not really a lot else to say in there we've got the fuel cap on here just the aston style one just has a bit of class to it i really like it and down the side here it's exactly the same so I think if we move now onto the interior of the car, the interior has not really changed a huge amount, to be perfectly honest. We've got speaker pods down here, and this centre console as well. This came from custom consoles, added the speaker pods here, but also speaker board just underneath the rear seat, which I know is a bit covered up at the minute. Six by nines in the back, six and a half inch speakers up front, and also six and a half on the rear parcel shelf. In fact, if we have a look at that, I've got some wooden spacers off of eBay. I think they're about five pounds for the pair, possibly seven, something like that. But I just wanted to add some spacers because it's so drilling into the actual uh, parcel shelf of the car. BS Pioneer Stereo because I think it provides a good sound quality at a reasonable price. Um, what else have we got here? Steering wheel, probably one of the biggest things in here to make note of, I suppose. Wood rim, again, keeping that more classical style, and a leather gear knob as well. On top of the leather gear knob, we've also got the Union Jack pedals, which I think is just a neat little touch, gives a bit of a heart back to the heritage of the car. But the final few modifications really in here, on top of these tiny tweeters that I've just put in down here with some double-sided sticky tape of all things, seems to hold it well, is the USB socket and the cigarette type socket in here as well as the rover badge just again for a little bit of a heart back to what the car is but on that interior fairly standard to be perfectly honest i like it as it is might have a few other plans for it in the future but if we come on round to the front of the car we can have a look now underneath the bonnet underneath the bonnet then many of the changes under here are more cosmetic rather than performance based but i quite like it it's simple and I'm a simple man, really. So, probably the biggest thing that stands out in here, first of all, is the blue rocker cover that came from Mini Sport and the Paddy Hopkirk oil cap for the well, top of the rocker cover. Uh, that's just a little bit of a nod to the Rally Hero. We've also got clear weather shield so you can actually see through it, which is great for being at car shows. And if anybody wants to have a look underneath the bonnet whilst you're there, so you don't have to take it all out so people can see behind it. Although in this light, the camera is obviously picking it up a little bit more, so you're not quite seeing what's fully under there. Blue HT leads, new coil, a new dizzy that's in there, because of course, as I've already mentioned, the previous one actually failed on this car on the morning of our very first event, which was not the best way to start the day, to be perfectly honest, but uh, these things happen. We still got the Mini 2 the event, luckily. But probably one of the biggest changes I've made underneath the bonnet has been the upgrade of the cooling system. I've had an endless amount of problems with this in the past. So when it came to actually finding replacements for the bits, I'm a big fan of upgrading when you can. So I upgraded to this Fletcher Twin Core radiator. It's been really good quality, been great at keeping the car cool actually. I believe these are used for racing minis as well, so they must be pretty good. So. It's actually done extremely well, especially when waiting in the queues for the BMC and Leyland show last year, where it took ages to get in on a very, very hot day. Cars were overheating left, right and centre, but the Mini stayed cool, and that was nice. Silicon hoses as well. Upgraded to those after the rubber hoses that this car had previously were all perished and cracked and everything. And actually, one hose did go, and annoyingly, it was the bypass hose all the way down there. So, not a lot of fun to try and change that at IMM 2019 in the middle of a field. But only other change is this little breather pipe filter, I guess, doesn't actually do anything. It's more for looks, but it was cheap. I'm happy with it. And also the k &N air filter, which I know you can't see inside here, but it exists. And that is because 
We've got a new manifold inlet manifold and exhaust manifold, as well as needle in the carb. And of course, full manifold one and three quarter inch exhaust system going all the way from the front to the back. So it should produce a little bit more power than it otherwise would have done. I think it's about a stage one tune. So if we're looking to the future of this car then, things that I might do to it, um, that probably includes maybe a stage two tune in the future, but at the minute I'm really quite happy with where it is. But let's say this is all for the future. Might do a bit of styling upgrades to it, such as maybe painting the spring. I know it's something really very small and insignificant in the grand scheme of things, but I like my car to look a bit more of a showpiece, especially when I'm taking this one mainly to the shows. Um, washer bottle this has got a hole in the back of it because the mounting that's on the uh, inner wing actually keeps breaking into it i've now replaced a couple of these and each time they keep breaking so in the future i may just replace that with an entirely new bottle type if possible um, also i might try and get the bonnet hinge kit if possible that lifts up 90 degrees so i've got better access to the bonnet of the car or underneath the bonnet Another mod that I might do to it is actually change the interior seats, although I'm quite happy with the style of seats that there is in there at the minute. I'm really quite a fan of the mini sidewalk seats with that sort of tartany pattern. I think that would work quite well with this, personally. I'm not sure everybody else would agree, but again, at the end of the day, it's my car, and all of the mods that I've done on this are really quite easy to change back if I wish to sell it in the future fully stock. So that's where I am with that. Also, another modification, which I've just remembered, tow hook at the front so should the mini break down I can easily get it off the road with the assistance of another car and press metal number plates. Looking at all the modifications I've made to this car in this type of video context makes me realise just how much I have actually done to the car over time. Everything I've done here has not been one big lump all at once, it's been a an amalgamation of years of work put into this car to get it to the uh, place it is now. There's a few other little things that need doing over winter, which are more cosmetic things, such as sorting the rust down here. There's also a bit of work to do on the front arches and possibly even on the rear arch. A bit of work on the front floor as well. But again, fairly standard things to do on a classic Mini. But I think there's one more thing I need to address before I bring this video to a close, and that is Millie. Why did I choose Millie for this Mini's name? I think really the best way to put it is because when I got the Mini, it was a milestone. It was a milestone of knowing that I'd achieved a bucket list item. I'd always wanted a Mini, I'd wanted one for as long as I could remember. I think I made that quite plain at the start of this video. And knowing that I'd actually reached that milestone, I wanted to mark it. And instead of saying calling the Mini, Mini, M-I-N-N-I-E, or Miles, to obviously mark Milestone, I went, you know what, Millie. Millie suits this car's character and suits it well. And hopefully we'll have many more years of adventure together. Because so far, apart from one or two little issues with the bypass hose exploding and the uh, ignition system not working on a day when I really wanted it to, um, overall, this car has really not been that bad. I'm happy with it. And I can't see it leaving my life ever if I can keep hold of it forever. I will do. And that sort of brings a bit of a close to my video for this episode of Viewers Drives here on Team Ballet Lock Classics. So thank you very much for watching and thank you, Ian, for the opportunity to showcase my Mini on your channel. Back to you in the studio. So that was Jake, our roving reporter for today's video. I just want to thank Jake very much for taking the time out of his busy schedule just to give us a rundown and a walk around of Millie his Mini. Just where the backstory is of how he came to get Minis, where even the love of Minis came from and what he's done to the Mini and what his plans are for the future. But as you've already heard from the video, he's got no plans to ever get rid of Millie. And I totally agree with him there that I have had the Traveller so long here I would never get rid of her either. Um, as every Mini owner knows that once uh, you get bitten by that bug there's no going back. So. Um, yeah, I totally understand where he's coming from on that one. Um, you'll maybe already be aware too, if you are a follower of our channel and a subscriber, that we did a collaboration uh, with Jake uh, back in uh, 2020, I think it was, uh, for the 2020 Christmas special uh, in his former channel, which was Wolves Wheels. 
Uh, I'll actually put a link up on the screen here where you can go back and you can check those videos out. So they were shared on both um, my channel here as well as on Jake's uh, channel and you can still view uh, those videos there even though they were under the previous uh, previous title of his video of his channel. Um, so yeah, they were very, very interesting and that was actually a very fun project to do uh, as a collaboration. Um, as well as that, we have uh, already featured Millie on this channel um, very, very briefly uh, on the, our coverage of Simply British at Bewley, uh, which was a fantastic event that we attended. Um, it was actually the first time that uh, we met uh, Jack and Genevieve in person as well. So yeah, we've been uh, corresponding back and forth for a couple of years now and uh, had these collaborations, like I said, so uh, hopefully these will continue as well. But definitely go over and check out Fuel Power uh, and all of the videos that they have on there from the last couple of years. Uh, some very, very interesting stuff on there, car reviews, show uh, reviews and so on. And uh, yes, definitely worth checking out. And when you're there, make sure you like the videos and subscribe to their channel. So yeah, just wanna close this out by yeah, just thanking Jake again for uh, contributing to this episode of Viewers Drives. And uh, yeah, hopefully we will have much more of uh, the same sort of content coming very soon. So until then, thanks very much for watching. And in the words of Jake and Fuel Power team, farewell. <laughs>